traditionally uh, in military action, the high ground has always been uh, the best ground. Senator Bob Smith of New Hampshire serves on the Senate Armed Services Committee. He is one of Capitol Hill's leading voices for expanding the U.S. military's role in outer space. It's always the high ground. And, and as long as you control that high ground, you control the battle. And when you lose the high ground, when they take the hill from you, you lose the fight. In 1996, the U.S. Space Command published its vision for 2020. The document applies the military service's traditional roles and missions to the new medium of outer space. In 20 years' time, the military hopes to control outer space, much as the Navy protects shipping lanes and enforces blockades, or as the Air Force controls the skies over today's battlefields. Well, for the last four decades, the United States Air Force has had a doctrine that they call aerospace power, which proceeds from the assumption that air and space are basically the same thing, only space is a little higher up. If you think of space as being an extension of air power doctrine, then you would think about space the way you do gaining air superiority, basically making sure that your airplanes fill the sky and that nobody else's airplanes are out there. The Space Command's vision calls for a variety of new weapons to deny the use of outer space to any potential enemy. The truth is, uh, nations now are moving into space with missiles, with communications technology, with weather tech, uh, satellites, any of these things could be used for military application. So we have to have the ability to incapacitate those satellites and the ability to shoot down anything that goes into space that could harm us. Today, the most serious threat from above is an attack by long-range nuclear missiles. Covering thousands of miles in a matter of minutes, the majority of a long-range missile's flight takes place outside the Earth's atmosphere. Pick any nation, the Chinese, for example, who could fire a missile and hit the United States, and today we cannot stop that missile. In 1999, Congress passed a law requiring the United States to field a national missile defense system as soon as technologically possible. The task is proving to be one of the greatest technological challenges the U.S. military has ever faced. But their efforts thus far are providing a glimpse at the weapons of the future. One program undergoing tests is the National Missile Defense System, or NMD. The system uses interceptor missiles, which release a small projectile known as the kill vehicle into outer space where it smashes into the enemy warhead. This weapon could be ready for service by the year 2005. But there is already concern that the NMD system could be defeated by missiles using decoys, multiple warheads, or other measures to confuse the kill vehicle. We cannot assume, and we do not plan at this point, that this program remains static because, as General Welch points out, if a static defense remains static, there will come a point at which it can be overcome. General Ronald Kadish is the head of the Ballistic Missile Defense Organization, the Pentagon agency responsible for the NMD project. According to the general, NMD will be just one part of a larger, more sophisticated missile defense. We fully expect that the threat of missile attack from states that threaten international peace and security will evolve over time. And accordingly, we have a follow-on NMD program to meet a larger, more sophisticated threat. Part of that follow-on program is a family of laser weapons designed for missile defense. There is the tactical high-energy laser, or THEL, a ground-based weapon, the airborne laser, which is mounted on a jumbo jet, and a space-based laser. In ground tests, the lasers developed for these weapons have pierced metal and melted the hulls of missiles in less than one second. While all of these weapons are designed for the purpose of missile defense, each will give the U.S. military new destructive capabilities. In addition to intercepting missiles, any one of them could be used to attack targets in outer space. 
If the kill vehicle used in the NMD system can be made to intercept a single warhead, which is about the size of a man, much larger objects in space, like satellites, could become easy targets. The laser weapons are also a potential threat to satellites. Because of the intense energy beam, flight tests like this one, where the Fell system shoots down a small rocket over the New Mexico desert, have to be tightly controlled. A stray laser beam from the weapon, or even a reflection of the beam, could damage satellites or blind astronauts in space. If a laser weapon can damage a satellite by accident, then surely it can be used to do so intentionally. The space-based laser is an orbiting weapon designed to shoot not just missiles, but other spacecraft and even attack targets on the ground. The program's website features a countdown to the weapon's first flight. If the space-based laser stays on schedule, a shot will be fired in space for the first time ever in the year 2013. And the United States will be well on the way to fulfilling its vision for military control in outer space. The way I look at it, somebody's going to control space. And it's either going to be a benevolent nation, like the United States, that will use it to protect itself, but not to, not to harm, or it can be an aggressor. And uh, I'd rather have it be the United States than an aggressor who has control. But such enthusiasm for American space power is far from universal. Check this out. 2020 vision means war in space. Dennis Kucinich is a Democratic congressman from Ohio. He is also a member of an international movement to stop the spread of weapons into outer space. The U.S. Space Command intends to control and dominate space. Seize the heavens, the high ground. <laughs> there is a sense of arrogance about this, that somehow we have the power to dominate the, the, not only the globe, but the entire universe. Colonel Joseph Ash, uh, Ashby, commander of the U.S. Space Command, has been quoted as saying, quote, we will engage in terrestrial targets someday. Ships, airplanes, land targets from space. We will engage targets in space from space. This is madness. And it's time for us to speak out against this idea of hegemony in space. There is a plan uh, already out, which said in 20 years time, in 20 years' time, U.S. is going to have land-based land -based weapons to be used in our space, and also space-based platforms, weapons, weapon systems, lasers. That will be key part of the U.S. strategic uh, forces. So with this in mind, other people, of course, will, be, will feel concerned, will feel concerned. While the Space Command's stated intention is to protect American interests and investment in outer space, other countries worry that these weapons will be used to increase the United States' military control over the Earth as well as in space. As we know, U.S. already has, first of all, uh, superiority in conventional weapons, most lethal nuclear arsenal. And now it is well embarked on the road to, uh, to the control of space. You see weapon system floating in the, in the out space, you feel insecure because it could come onto you any time. There's no boundary, so to speak, can prevent that from, from attacking you. It's very scary. It's very scary. 